Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are, whenever you're watching this, this is Floating in Dreams. Today we're going to do a top three in every category base product edition. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. Today's video is going to be my top three favorite products in every single category base product edition. So the reason why I came up with this video is because I did a save or splurge video a couple of weeks ago and I really wanted to sort of get more in depth in like different categories and what I like. And then I saw Kelly Gooch splitting up her top three favorites in a given category along like different parts of the, her makeup collection. I was like, that's genius. I wanna do it as well. So we're kicking things off with base product, which includes primers, setting sprays, foundation, concealer, and powder. So in some of these categories, I'm gonna have more than just three, because for instance, especially the foundation category, I wanted to make sure I shared with you my top three favorite full coverage, long wearing things, perfect for every day, drugstore, you know? I just wanted to make sure that I went through all of the options, so that's why I've got a lot of products to share with you today, so let's get started. In case you're new here, hi, my name is Maika. I live in the Netherlands. I like to come on here to chat about eyeshadow palettes, Essence and Catrice reviews, and getting the use out of my makeup. And because I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone, I am a snow angel. So if you would like to join the snow angel club, then definitely click subscribe down below. I've got a lot of products to chat about, so I wanna start with the smaller categories first, and primer is one of my smaller categories. I'm not a huge lover of primers. It was one of the last products I added to my makeup routine. I was like, primers, who needs it? But then I was riding my bicycle a bit more and I had some long days at work and I found that a primer can either just serve as a really nice base for the rest of my makeup. So I've got a sort of like a, a, a few different products here, like different primers that can do different things. So in terms of like, hydrating my skin and making sure that my makeup lasts a bit longer. My favorite is the Milk Hydro Grip. I went to several minis of this before I decided to buy the full size. It's just that whenever Essence and Catrice do updates of their makeup collections, they always have new primers. So I'm for e forever trying out new Essence and Catrice primers, which on the whole I tend to like, but they discontinue them very quickly, which is why none of those will be making an appearance in this video today. Then something that I've discovered quite recently is the MAC Strobe Cream. I'm just holding a travel mini here, but I have a full size of this in backup and I also went through a small size of this in the past. I love this for a glowy primer and I prefer it over the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter because I feel the shade of this is better for me. So the Charlotte Tilbury is sort of this hybrid where you can also use it instead of foundation, which I would never do, but because her line is quite warm toned and this is in the shade Pink Light, which is a very nice sort of like light pink shade. It works really well for my skin tone. So that's why I like that better. And then we just have Glossier Future Dew. If you want your skin to look wet, this for sure. And now that it's a little easier for me to find Glossier, because they have a store in London now, I feel I can recommend this a little bit more and I can use it a bit more as well. Cause I was sort of like, as much as I love this, I haven't used it a lot because I didn't want to use it up because it was like, I'll never be able to buy a backup now that I know that I love this. But now that I know that they're in London, it's going to be easier to get a hold of. Another small category, setting spray. Setting spray on my dry skin. Again, another product I felt I needed for a long time. So everybody was always raving about the Urban Decay All Nighter and I definitely tried it, but it was too heavy duty for every day. But I love this when I travel. So I love having this as many sizes that I can easily ch chuck into a makeup bag because I'm out all day and I just don't want to fuss about my makeup then. So that's why the All Nighter by Urban Decay I like, but I don't love it for day to day. Uh, it's more, it's just too heavy duty. But the ones I've been loving, and one thing I discovered this year, is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh. This has been in my shop, my stash, and the only reason why I'm like desperate to do another ColourPop order is because this is running low. So I know I will be making another purchase from ColourPop towards the end of the year, uh, and then I will definitely be buying like two of these because this is now my favorite setting spray. This is um, a setting mist with hyaluronic acid. It works really nicely on my dry skin, but it does make my makeup just look really, really good as well. So that's why 
I cannot rave about this enough. And this I'm not even sure if it's still around, but before that, the fixing spray I loved the most was the green tea fixing spray from iHeart Revolution. I think it's still on their official website, but it's very often heavily discounted. So I'm not sure if they discontinued it by now. This is my fourth bottle of this because this is just my favorite setting spray. I, it's, it doesn't really do much in terms of like locking your makeup in place. I'm not looking for that kind of thing because any spray I've tried that does that makes my, my skin just look horrible uh, and very textured and cakey and dry, but this, love it. And then the last small category, powder. Again, dry skin gal here, so powders. Do I really need them? I kind of just apply them here and on my under eye, and that's all I powder. I don't use powder all over my face because it looks horrible, but I do have a couple that I like, and actually two of the ones that I like and I'm showing you today are the high-end version and the dupe of that high-end version. So the high-end version I'm talking about, and I just have it as a mini for travel, is Hourglass's Ambient Lighting Powder in Diffused Light. Love this stuff, very finely milled, great product indeed, but I have found that the Kiko Radiant Fusion Powder does exactly the same thing at a fraction of the price point. This is cheaper than the travel size of the Hourglass, and you get like, what, 10 grams of product? Yes, this has been lasting me for a while. I think it's in my Shop My Stash for like the third or fourth month, uh, month running, and you can finally see a dent in this. So the shade of this is really lovely too. It's very similar to the Hourglass, is it exactly the same? Perhaps not, but I feel that this just does what I want my skin to do, and it's been lovely for that. And then another dupe for a more high-end product that I don't even have anymore because I love this one so much, the Essence Skin Loving Sensitive Mineral Powder that I have three backups from because I was afraid they were going to discontinue it. I think they have by now, and this is a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Filter. There, I said it again. It only comes in one shade though, which the Kiko comes in many more shades. So that's why I wanted to put that in here. But this, in terms of like powder, when I try this, I was like, this is not just a good powder at the drugstore. And for how expensive it is, it's like 359, 395. It's like under four euros. I was like, it's as good as Charlotte's. And I was like, I need to put it again in this video because it's just good. It's really good. For concealer, I do have several categories what I want to share with you. I've got corrector, I've got my lightweight dewy concealers, which are my favorite, and then I also have more fuller coverage things that I know some people just prefer. So I wanted to share my recommendation there as well. For corrector, I just have one thing because I don't I don't even have three, well, I do have three correctors right now, but one of them I haven't used enough to say whether I like that enough or not. So I'm just gonna go with my favorite, the Peri Para Ink Corrector in the shade Peach. I love this stuff. Discontinued. Then full coverage concealers that I like, but I like these for very particular things or very particular reasons, uh, and that's these three. So the NARS Soft Matte Creamy Concealer is just, really, really good. It is a little bit more heavy duty than what I normally go for, but very often these like cream or very full coverage concealers just don't look great if you have any sort of texture or fine lines under your eyes. I'm in my late 30s. We've got lines, we've got wrinkles, especially around like the smile area for sure. This is the only one that I've really found that doesn't cake up and that looks nice. At the moment, the shade is a little bit too light for me though, but I love this in the winter time because in the winter time, my dark circles, because my skin goes so pale, just stand out even more. And then this works really well. And I love that because it comes in the pot, you can use it with a brush and you can really buff it in as well. It works really well that way. Um, then the Nabla, uh, this is their Close Up Concealer. I have this in Light Ivory, and I love this for cut creases. If you want to cover up shadow and create more exciting looks, then this is a great one. It's like Tarte Shape Tape. It's that level of coverage. It's incredibly full coverage. Not good for my face at all, at all, but I have, I just keep this around so I have a concealer to block out parts of my eyeshadow look if I want to. And then something I tried really recently, the Clio Kill Cover Concealer. 
Uh, this is a uh, K-Beauty brand and this is very full coverage. I wore it one day, I was like, oh, this is very potent. I mean, one dot and you get as much coverage as you get with like two swipes of that. It's very intense, but it didn't look dry and cakey on my under eye, which I was very happy with. It's more coverage than what I personally feel I want. I very like, I like a lightweight base and I feel that when you then go in with a very strong full coverage concealer, it just looks a bit weird. So that's why this, it doesn't really go with my makeup aesthetic, but if you're looking for a good full coverage concealer, I think K-Beauty brands can definitely cater to your needs. But where it's at for me is here, the Dewy Concealers. Essence Stay All Day 16 hour concealer in the shade Soft Beige. This only comes in two shades and this is the darkest one. <laughs> it's insane. This is so good. This is my third tube. And then we have the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define Concealer. The only product from Revolution still in my collection in the shade 3. This does come in a lot of different shades. And I love this thing. It do, you go through it quickly though. That's something you need to bear in mind. But I'm, if I'm not mistaken, they do this in a bigger size as well. And it's only a little bit more expensive. But I love drugstore concealers. And this is, would be my favorite one for like an all-rounder. It's not too dewy. It's more like a light, buildable to medium coverage. So you can just apply it all over your face and be done. I love this. It doesn't accentuate any dry patches or look weird or do anything like that. I love this baby. And then my Glossier Stretch Concealer in G12. I love pairing this with the Peri Para Ink Corrector. I put, pop that one on my dark circles and then I top this over it. This is very emollient and very dewy. It doesn't have a whole lot of coverage though, but in the winter time when my under eyes can be super dry, this is a lifesaver. And now we're going to get to foundation. And for foundation, I have four categories. I've got full, full coverage slash long wearing. I've got drugstore. I've got great for every day. And I have lightweight dewy. Shall we do it in that order? So my full coverage long wearing foundations. YSL All Hours in BR20. This is my perfect foundation shade. If I need something that's heavy duty, this and then the Urban Decay All Nighter on top and you just know it's going to look snatched. Especially if, for instance, if I go out dancing at night, this is the foundation I wear because it just, it stays put no matter what you do. And there's a dupe at the drugstore for it. So if you want that at a more affordable price point, the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear, I have mine in 20 Ivory. Yes. And this, this I've, I've done a video comparing these. They're, they do exactly the same thing. You don't have to pay this kind of money, but I would still pick this. Because I just like it a hair better, just a hair. And then if you do want something dewy, but that you can build up to full coverage and that does stay put, I feel the Hourglass Vanish Stick is really good for that. They have a new foundation out, which I'm sort of curious after. So I, if I'm ever in the market again for trying new foundation, it might be that, but I'm currently trying out a lot of foundation at the moment. So I don't need that in my life. Uh, I have this in the shade alabaster and I really like this one more so in the winter time because it is that creamier texture um, but it I feel it does something differently um, I feel it does the same thing for me as like the YSL thing. For drugstore foundations I have been trying out some drugstore foundations and I'm gonna do an overview of some drugstore foundations I've tried because I felt I hadn't tried that many drugstore foundations but if I look at my current makeup collection and the drugstore foundations in them, then these three would be my picks. We have the Flower Beauty Light Illusion uh, foundation in the shade Porcelain. I kept this around even though the shade is too dark for me because I love the formula that much. And I have found that this is a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin. I put this in a dupes video earlier in the year and I found that the texture of it was very similar to that Charlotte Tilbury foundation. So now I understand why I like the Charlotte Tilbury as well because this is the OG. This was launched before that. I felt this needed a mention more so than Charlotte. NYX Born to Glow. This was a recent discovery and this is the foundation that made me realize that I just hadn't tried so many 
drugstore foundations in recent years and I was like, I need to ch make a change there. This, because this was good. It's very glowy though. Definitely more of a wintertime thing. Um, and if you have oily skin, you probably won't love this, but on my dry skin, it worked really, really well. I have the shade Porcelain, which is a great shade match for me too. And it comes in quite a lot of shades. And then, Bourjois Healthy Mix. This is one of the foundations I'm trying out for that video. Not because I need to try this out, because this is the third bottle of this I've owned. Not because I've used it up, but they reformulated it, and then I bought that shade in the reformulated, sh uh, in the reformulated version. That was lighter than the original shade I had, so I kept the new bottle over the old bottle at the time. And then I still ended up decluttering it, even though I love the formula of this because I felt the shade wasn't right for me. That was 51 Vanilla. They've come out with more shades since I tried it all those years ago, which I didn't know because the shades aren't available in our makeup, like in our stores. So I was able to find this online. This is in the shade Rose Ivory number 50. I believe there are even lighter shades on the market by now, but nothing new has come out from Bourjois in a while, but I still love this and I was like, right. This looks like a much better shade match for me and not as um, like yellow as the vanilla shade I used to have. So this is a bit rosier and it seems to be more of a pinky peach, which is what I prefer in my base. So I hope this shade is better. I'm currently testing it out in my Shop My Stash. And then great for everyday foundation. And here we get a bit bougie, but just because I wanted to make sure that I could also throw in something a bit more affordable, um, I wanted to show you this. The Zoeva Authentic Skin Foundation. If you have trouble getting a hold of Zoeva, know that the uh, ABH Luminous Foundation is exactly the same. Again, I did a video comparing the two. I like this one a little bit better than the ABH one though. This is the uh, Authentic Skin Foundation in 030 N Ambition. And this is such a good everyday foundation. It is again more on the dewy side than anything else. I have some other things here that you might like a bit better if you have oilier skin. This is not an oily skin foundation. This is great if you have dry skin though and it comes in a ton of shades. And that was the most affordable option because I just have bougie taste and I feel that these two are my favorite picks for every day. The Dior foundation is also great for travel because of how it's packaged. That should have been a category I should have included, best for travel, but yeah, I just go for different packaging then. But this is also great for like just, you know, just such a good all rounder. It can just do so much. It's not too heavy of a coverage. It looks lightweight. It wears really well on my skin tone. It just works really well for every day. And because of the fact that it has that little dropper, it's very easy to control. You never get too much. And my shade in this, 0N, is also a perfect shade match. It comes in a lot of shades, but I've, I've heard that not all shades are right for everyone. So I'm not sure how you're gonna match to this. But yeah, this is one of my favorite, like good for everyday foundations. If I were to pick just one foundation that I could keep for the rest of my life, it's this. And then we have Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. This was my favorite foundation I tried all last year. And now I was like, oh, I understand the hype. This is so good at just canceling out your retinas, giving you coverage, but not too much and still make it look natural. I have shade three, which is a perfect shade match. And this, Again, like with, the, like with the Dior, if I ever use this up, I'm gonna repurchase it for sure, because it's that good. And then we are gonna have to talk about my favorite dewy lightweight foundations. And here again, I've got more high-end pinks than I do more affordable pinks, but the pretty fresh tinted moisturizer for ColourPop in the shade 4N Fair, this is really, really good. And it's making me realize again my wish from like, you know, more drugstore brands doing skin tints and stuff. There are a lot of things out now that seem to be labeled as skin tints, but they're not really. This is a tinted moisturizer. It's very lightweight, dewy coverage. I love this. It was one of my favorite base products I tried in 2020. It went bad since then. It got, it looked really fun, funky the way it looked, um, but now I did buy a backup of it because I just like it so much. But, I also like my bougie options, Giorgio Armani Neo Nude. I use it again over the summertime. This is so good if you have dry skin. 
I have mine in the shade 1.5. I've talked about the struggles of getting my shade because this shade is not for sale in the, in the Netherlands. So Giorgio Armani is one of those brands where, you know, they, they have more shades than what they sell here, which is a bit of a shame. But overall, I really like this product. Again, a product I would definitely repurchase if I ever run out of it. It does seem to be going low quite quickly. I mean, I can I can sort of look at it and it seems to be like like this far gone by now. So I'm not sure how long this would last in my makeup collection, but this is so great for like transitioning from spring into summer. That's when this, and I use it a lot when I use it in, was it June, July? I use it a lot. And then for the winter time, I really like this. The Light Wonder from Charlotte Tilbury. I've already mentioned Charlotte Tilbury a couple of times. I've tried the Beautiful Skin, which I like, but I think I prefer this because it's just a little bit more lightweight. I have this in the shade Too Fair, and this is just a really good shade match. Again, really long lasting as well. I could have put this in the Great for Everyday category too. Uh, this is really nice, lightweight, and I actually, I remember when I was testing this out, I accidentally left it on my face when I was going for a workout, and it looked stunning really really pretty even though I was sweating buckets and this stayed on and for a lightweight dewy foundation if you've ever tried any you know that's a feat because very often they will just melt off your face but this one stays put so yeah this is a good one too it's great light coverage so that's it there you have it those were all of the products I want to chat about in today's video give it a thumbs up if you like it subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me I make several videos a week so if you like stay tuned for more and I hope to see you in my next video bye bye